Hey folks, I am Ryan Goodman and you are listening to the Agriculture Proud Podcast. Join the conversation and find all my content at agricultureproud.com. Hello and welcome to episode 11 of the Agriculture Proud Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Goodman, coming at you from Helena, Montana. On this podcast, I cover a little bit of everything in agriculture and hear the stories behind a few of the people who are involved in farming and ranching from all different parts of the country. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or wherever podcasts are found. Follow me on social media as AgProudRyan and on Facebook as AgricultureProud. And as always, you can find all the episodes and show notes at agricultureproud.com slash podcast. And while you're there, I'd encourage you to go ahead and hit subscribe to get my weekly email so you never miss a blog post or a new podcast episode. If you'll recall, a few weeks ago, in episode 8 of the podcast, Jen Zeller from South Dakota shared a few tips on photography from the ranch to help us with our social media and advocacy efforts. And if you haven't already, be sure to skip back to that episode and give it a listen. I'll be sure to include a link to that show in today's show notes so you can catch up with our conversation with the South Dakota cowgirl. Well, on this week's episode, we are headed down to Texas to talk a bit more about photography skills and how your online presence can make a big impact on your farming or ranching business. I'm very excited to have founder and CEO of Ranch House Designs, Rachel Couture, join me on the podcast today. Uh, Rachel has strong roots in the ranching and the cattle community, being part of the V8 Ranch, which is a premier Brahmin and shorthorn breeder located down in Texas. Over the years, Rachel has taken her love and expertise from marketing to found Ranch House Designs. And if you haven't found them yet on Ranch House Designs on social media, I certainly encourage you to look them up and connect. They share a lot of great material every day. Uh, They do a lot of work to help cattle producers utilize online tools and promote their business and advocacy work and have a little fun along the way. Uh, During our conversation, Rachel shares a bit of her expertise and some great tips for improving your use of these tools and capturing those sometimes hard to get photos of cattle out in the field. And I certainly think you'll enjoy our conversation. As you listen to the podcast, send me any thoughts you may have. You can connect with me on social media as AgProudRyan and find Ranch House Designs on all those social networks. And now I hope you enjoyed episode 11 of the Agriculture Proud podcast with Rachel Couture, from Ranch House Designs. All right, on the podcast this week, I've got a great guest. Uh, We're going to talk a little bit about some online uh, marketing, give you some photography tips. I've got Rachel Couture from Ranch House Designs um, down in Texas. So welcome to the podcast, Rachel. Thanks, Ryan. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, sir, sure. appreciate you being here. And uh, just to kind of get us started, um, could you describe to us a little bit about what is your role in agriculture and, and how did you, how'd you get there? Okay, so I am the founder and the current CEO of Ranch House Designs, which is a full-service marketing agency down here in Texas. And we specialize in serving agriculture and agribusiness accounts. And we work with about 600 farmers and ranchers on doing their website. And the way that I actually got started in doing it is because I grew up on a cattle ranch here in Texas, V8 Ranch, and about 15 years ago, we were having a a somewhat of a dispersal sale, and I was in college at the time, and I thought it would be a cool idea to build a website to uh, showcase our sale, and then really from there, I I guess by God's grace, it just kind of took off because through word of mouth, I started doing websites for other friends in the cattle industry, and and over the last uh, 15 or 16 years, we just steadily started working with more and more ranchers and farmers. And today, we do about 600 websites, and we do a lot of we do websites, but we also do sale catalogs. Uh, we help a lot of ranches promote their bull sale and their female sales. We do a lot of social media work, print designs, video, basically anything and everything that can be used to promote your farmer ranch or ag business we do okay yeah i definitely see ranch house designs everywhere in a lot of the work and and i see several uh, kind of workshops that you're involved in as well yes yeah. yeah we do uh, about five or six years ago well before i worked at ranch house designs i worked for texas uh, extension service and so education has always been really important to me and i found that there was a lot of workshops you could go to that focus on you know production management but there wasn't really any workshop that I knew of in our area that was strictly about livestock marketing and being a little more specialized in livestock photography. And so um, we started that 
um, through Ranch House Designs about five or six years ago, and that has evolved into a nationwide conference that we have every spring called the Gathering Conference, and we just held it um, in April in Oklahoma City, and we had 75 producers come, and through the years we've had about 500 people attend the conference, and it's really fun because it's a way to learn about agriculture and marketing, but also to get in a community with people who also have that same passion. And so it's been just a real pleasure to do those workshops, and we hope to keep doing them uh, nationwide throughout the year and the years to come. Oh, that's pretty cool. And and uh, so you, you've been involved in different aspects of the cattle business and livestock industry over the years. Um, we've seen a lot of new online tools, and I guess you obviously help a lot of a lot of producers with their websites and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, how how has that changed the cattle business to have access to all those online tools to to promote our cattle and our business? Well, you know, when I started Ranch House Designs, the new online tool was a website. And I kind of, I mean, we would laugh about that now because so many producers have websites and use that in their marketing and have for a while. So, you know, in the last few years, I would say the biggest two tools that have um, came out available to help would be social media and the use of like online sales platforms where producers can have online sales and we are our own rant to utilize uh, online sales, whether we just do strictly an online sale or we offer the online bidding during a, a live production sale, you know, with an auctioneer. And for us, I can say that's really helped us reach a new audience that we hadn't re- been able to reach before. And it also allows us to keep our costs down um, because we aren't, it isn't as labor intensive to have an online sale. And then we also utilize a lot of social media through our rants, like we've really cut down our print advertising and, and increased a lot of our digital media. We do a lot of videos, a lot of Facebook interaction and things like that. And I think those two tools have really helped us. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's it's neat to be able to expand that audience um, and utilizing these tools sometimes is able to help us get more done with, with fewer resources, which is pretty cool. Right. Um, so like right. I've seen a lot of, a lot of, um, We've, we've got a lot of these online resources and everything, and not everybody may not always have access to a professional photographer for their cattle or things like that. And so we, we see a lot of cattle posted online when, when people are trying to trying to post their cattle, like with, with my new business, AgriClear, um, working with that and, mm-hmm. and listing our, and describing our cattle. Um, so you've been obviously mm-hmm. focused, had a lot of good photography um, and everything like that. What are some of the common things um, mistakes maybe or things that you would suggest to improve for people who are trying to photograph their cattle in a way that describes them well for these online purposes? Well, uh, we kind of joke at our family because um, in our family business, we have two nationally acclaimed professional wedding photographers, see my brother and my sister. They are Luke and Kat, and they are like internationally famous wedding photographers, professionals in every sense of the word, but the, the person who actually photographs most all of our cattle is my husband, Brandon, who is a novice in every meaning of the word. And um, and we like that. You know, we, we try to do as much as we can for ourselves here at the ranch, you know, to help keep our costs down. And we found that in most all cases, we can take the photos we need for our online sales ourselves. And, um, you know, my husband just has a, a very basic Canon camera with um he uses the kit lens that came with it and then he purchased a a little bit better lens that he uses you know for when we're out in a larger pasture trying to take pictures but and he actually shoots all of our photos in auto and um you know so he's definitely not using manual settings or anything like that um so it definitely can be done i feel like any producer who just wants to take a little time can do their own sale photos and their own photos the main thing's I would just stress are like uh, the basics of good lighting, choosing the good time of, a good time of day to take your photos, making sure your animals look in the best shape they can, you know, that they're cleaned, they're clipped if that's something you do, um, they're in an, a nice pen where the background isn't distracting. And then you just have those basics down, like the correct feet placement, good head carriage and things like that. And then another thing I would mention is that we do not Photoshop a single picture that we take. And, you know, so if you see a picture from V8 Ranch, you might uh, notice that, like, there might be a little mud on the cap or, you know, there there might be something that 
doesn't look, you know, exactly perfect in the picture. But we find that putting up those natural photos that aren't photoshopped makes our photos more believable and authentic. And people like that from us because they know what they're seeing is the true representation of the animal and that it's not been photoshopped at all. Yeah, no, that's that's something that's, yeah, it doesn't have to be intimidating. Uh, a lot of people can do it, but that's right. a really good tip. I like that. It, Photoshop, Photoshop isn't necessary. I mean, we want to see the cattle as they are, right? Right. Yes, definitely. Uh, we started, I guess we started our non-Photoshopping policy mostly because we were so busy. And if you start playing around in that Photoshop, then even if it's just something to like take off a halter, the next thing you know, you spend an hour in the program trying to do I don't even know what and just because of time we were like let's just pull them off the camera and put them straight up and then now that's just our normal thing we don't even open photoshop so for for folks who are maybe going out to their pasture and they've got a, a group of calves that they want to sell um what's what's kind of the best positions or or places to be able to try to capture that group of calves when they're trying to take a photo to to post online Okay, well, here at our ranch, we have a picture pin, which is just right offset of our barn. And so we'll keep um, all of the group together, and then we'll shoot the calves out one at a time and put them into this smaller picture pin. And um, we use a round pin so that there's no corners. They don't get stuck in a round pin. Um, and then also just a little tip, like we, it's a small pin, but we keep it watered in the summer, so it's always got nice green grass. We like the grass to be fairly short, like not just, you know, cut down to the ground, but where the grass will cover their feet a little bit, but definitely not so high as to where people can't see their feet and legs and see their structure, see them move and stuff. And so my husband likes, he's a photographer, and he is always going to be in the pen, and then he likes to have one person who's his photo assistant to help just kind of keep pushing the animal and then be the ear getter to get their attention. But in other cases, sometimes he likes to work by himself because he's found that Sometimes if you have too many people in the pen, it just gets the calves excited and distracted. And so if he has a free afternoon, he might just go in the picture pen himself and just really take a lot of time and be patient to where he can really work the animals and get that perfect shot. Um, we like to take our pictures in the morning, uh, either right in the morning when the sun's kind of coming up or uh, or in the evening, say two hours before sun, two hours after the sun comes up or two hours before the sun going down. It's kind of the time we like to shoot for. Um, we always shoot with the sun at our back. We try to avoid shooting just at high noon because the shadows are going to be pretty bad then. But we also realize sometimes you got to work with what you have. And if that happens to be one o'clock, then we're going to just do the best we can, you know, with that situation. Yeah. Uh, black cattle are always difficult to, to get. A, a decent photo of it to kind of show them what uh when, when's kind of the best time to try to get them rather than just kind of like it seems like when i'm always trying to photograph black cattle they're always shaded out or or something like that hard to get um well you know we don't have a lot of black cattle <laughs> our cattle are gray brahmins and so we don't have that problem but just in general you would want to still stick with those early times of the day or the afternoon keep the sun at your back you know, definitely not when the sun is straight up in the air. And even sometimes if there's an overcast day that's, you know, slightly cloudy, you can get some really good pictures during that time because you're still going to have natural light, but it's not going to just be straight straight up sun creating a lot of shadows. And then, you know, if we're taking an animal, especially one on halter, before we take the picture, we just really stop and analyze where all those shadows are and then try to move, even just moving slightly, you know, turning the calf a different way can help put the shadow maybe on their backside instead of the front of their body. And so that's how we manage working with shadows. Right. So after you capture the photo, um, what do you find the most, we already, you know, kind of mentioned avoid kind of Photoshopping, but is there anything that you do with the photos after you capture them before, you know, kind of putting them out and distributing them? We, uh, so we like to, um, like, as I mentioned, just put the photos pretty much straight out there. But we kind of try to select a strategy in our timing. Like, just because I took a picture today doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to post it today. Um, if we are promoting a sale, we really like to do a lot of intensive uh, photo sharing about 
10 days to two weeks before the sale. And, um, and then I mentioned we don't use Photoshop, which we don't to like, uh, edit the photo, but if we're going to be posting the photos on social media, we do need to pull them into Photoshop or some other photo resizing uh, software because, I don't know if you noticed this, but if you look around Photoshop, there is like a lot of mutilated cast pictures where somebody's uh, uploaded a picture of their spear or something, but his nose totally cut off or his feet are totally cut off because that's how Facebook has resized it automatically. And what I like to tell people is you would never use a cropped picture like that in your print ad. And so if you're going to be posting on social media, just take the time to pull it into one of those photo editing programs and resize it into the correct pixels, which you can just Google that and get what they are. And so that's kind of the steps we do with posting our photos after we take them. Okay. Yeah, definitely important to make sure that they're sized for for the platform for where you're yeah. sharing them and make sure that appears. Right. Um, so on a, yeah. on a little bit of different note, um, pri prior to, to getting on this call, you'd kind of mentioned um, a lot of flooding down in your area. I know the last couple of weeks and during April, we've seen some flooding uh, down in Texas. Um, mm -hmm. how, how has that been impacting ranchers mm -hmm. in the area? Well, um, we live right along the Colorado River, and so we ourselves are about 10 miles away from that, and we haven't had any flooding, but there's been other ranchers in the area that have you know, had their pastures completely flooded. We've had to move, move some cattle off of leaf, leaf pastures, just kind of getting them up to higher ground. But um, so far, it's been pretty good, and then there have been so many other ranchers that have really come to the aid of the ranchers in this area, like many producers who are offering, like, will give you free hay if you need some hay or if you need a place to put your cattle. You know, a lot of neighbors are helping, and actually some of the cattle we moved yesterday were from a neighbor's pasture that are just going to stay on our place for a couple of weeks until the water goes down. And so everybody's been helping each other, and it's made it definitely a lot more manageable by working together. Yeah, yeah, it's always a tough, tough time to go through when the waters jump up real quick, but uh, the uh, yeah. ranching community always comes together and helps each other out. Yes, they do. So, and, and on that note, uh, you know, ag, ag and ranching community is very, uh, very passionate about our jobs. Um, and I think a lot of people are, are like that across the industry. Um, what advice would you have for, for others who are trying to pursue uh, their passion in the ag field? Well, I would say just believe in yourself and work hard at it. I mean, there's the ag industry is so large and diverse that I really don't feel like any of us have any quote competitors so to speak that we're all more like colleagues and that we can all work together and um, help each other boost our businesses or boost our operations or you know get more exposure for our businesses and farms and ranches and I have many friends and mentors in the, the industry who've helped me along the way and definitely put me where I'm at and so um, I you know we're always glad to return that to others and if there are any people out there who are interested in doing what I do like marketing and communications within the niche of livestock industry, I'd be super happy to serve as a mentor or answer any questions for anybody who wants a little more information about it. Okay. And where can we find uh, information about Ranch House Designs or, or getting a hold of you? Oh, okay. Sure. You can find Ranch House Designs online at www.ranchhousedesigns.com. We also have a Facebook page, which is Ranch House Designs, and an Instagram account and Twitter. And so um, you can check us out on any of those platforms. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, definitely always some good content on there and uh, definitely appreciate you having you on the podcast and for you joining us this week, Rachel. Yeah. Well, thank you, Ryan. Thanks so much. And if you ever get down to Texas, you have to come look us up. Oh, yeah. Definitely will do. I'll, yeah, I definitely. try to make my way. It's a, it's a long way across the yeah. country, but definitely try to. I know. I know. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Rachel Couture from Ranch House Designs. Rachel shared some great tips for capturing photos of our cattle, whether we're sharing online for advocacy or marketing purposes. I know that uh, these questions are some that I've received from ranchers during the past couple of months that I've been working with as we've been selling cattle on agriclear.com. And I hope that you uh, picked up a few new ideas from our conversation today as well. And uh, if you have any questions or suggestions for future podcast guests, uh, shoot them my way. I'd love to hear, uh, hear your suggestions and comments. I'm doing a new episode of the podcast every week and I have some great interviews lined up and I've always 
open to new ideas. Um, well, I'll be sure to include the links to the social pages and websites we discussed in the episode in today's show notes found at agricultureproud.com slash podcast. Just look for episode 11 on that page. And uh, that's all for this week. Tune in next Wednesday for a new episode. And as always, you can connect with me on social media as Ag Proud Ryan and on Facebook as Agriculture Proud. Until next time, this is Ryan Goodman with the Agriculture Proud Podcast. Mm-hmm.